back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, last week, the Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms could not ban bump stocks, which is an attachment for semi-automatic firearms that makes it easier to fire rapidly. NBC's Erin McLaughlin noted this fact during her coverage of three mass shootings that occurred over the weekend, even though none of those incidents seemed to involve bump stocks at all. Let's watch. A mass shooting at a splash pad in Michigan, another at a Juneteenth celebration in Texas, and yet another at a gathering in Massachusetts, all just days after Friday's Supreme Court ruling that rejects a ban on bump stocks. <laughs> I know, this is incredible. Now, so to be clear, um, the bump stocks were, so the, uh, the Department of the, the Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms People, regulating body, decided that under an existing prohibition for machine guns that um, that bump, st they, bump stocks could count as that, so they were banned. Um, the Supreme Court just said, no, if you want to ban bump stocks, you can't, but Congress has to pass a new law to cover that. The fact that, um, you know, this was famously used in the Las Vegas mass shooting, um, you can think that as a matter of public policy, this should be prohibited, and then we'd have a test of whether that can stand up to Second Amendment scrutiny, but the, the Bureau, the government regulators, can't just decide that a regulation that clearly does not cover this um, magically pertains to this as well. As, as frustrating as that is for, you know, gun control people in the media. Right. This is not really a blow to gun control as it is a blow to unelected bureaucrats making policy through federal rulemaking, which is the right decision in 99% of cases that come before the Supreme Court. And just to, you know, further clarify what the, what the bump stock was and how it was reclassified by the ATF is that firearms that were equipped with the bump stock were reclassified as machine guns, which made it illegal to own them. You have to have basically a grandfathered in permit that costs hundreds of dollars through the federal government in order to own a fully automatic firearm. And the bump stocks don't change the mechanics of the firearm. It's still one trigger pull for bullet fired. All it does is basically rock the gun back and forth so that you can fire the trigger faster. But if you're a professional, uh, shooter, you can probably fire just as fast as a bump stock enables to you just by, you know, normal normal right. use of the gun. Some people have demonstrated doing the same thing with a belt loop. Um, and then the bump stock also notoriously makes it very inaccurate to fire <laughs> at that rate. So it's it's more of like sort of a fun toy for gun enthusiasts than it is that any actual reasonable person would use this. Right. Um, I, I, I won't get into the Las Vegas shooting because there's a lot of unanswered questions about that shooting yeah. and what actually happened there. But um, for her to, to sit there and say, oh, well, it would have been so much worse if there were a bump stock involved. OK, well, USA Today put out all of these bizarre infographics a few years ago. You might remember this, where they showed the different attachments you can put on like an AR-15. And they had a chainsaw bayonet and all of these other insane things that nobody in their right mind would actually be able to put on their firearm. So it's like, yeah, sure, the mass shooting could have been worse if I had a chainsaw bayonet on my AR-15, right. but I did it. Right. <laughs> Most if people I, wouldn't. <laughs> if I dedicated, a, if I uh, detonated a nuclear device, it would have been right. worse. Which goes to the fact that, and this so often, you know, gets missed or deliberately obscured in the coverage of shootings, the, the mass shootings, which are absolutely awful, these random steaming style attacks at schools or malls or whatever, um, they're terrible, they're very hard to prevent, and they account for a small fraction of overall gun deaths. The vast majority of gun crimes in this country are committed by people with access to easily obtainable handguns. Um, they are they're one-off shootings. Um, they are suicides in many cases. That accounts for so much of the gun violence and the gun death. I didn't look specifically at these shootings over the, uh, over the weekend, but uh, I, I would bet without knowing, just looking at the statistics, that they involve handguns because that is how it is in the vast majority of cases. Um, you know, th these, are, th these are difficult public policy problems to solve, but taking uh, from, like, away from gun enthusiasts, regulating, right, bump stocks or those other enhancements, that's, like, ultimately not going to be a massive boon to public safety because they're just not involved in the vast majority of actual gun crimes. Gun crimes involved guns that even when you tightly regulate them, as, you know, some states have regulated handguns, they're, they're on the street, they're still out there, they can be obtained. You know, how many of these people who commit the, these, these crimes, they get arrested and then it turns out they are, were already precluded from buying a weapon because of a prior arrest or something like that. I mean, we have, you can enforce that, you can enforce the laws on the books to stop people who are not allowed to have firearms from having them 
because in vast majority of cases, that's the situation. Do we need more laws for that? We need, we need more enforcement. We need something, but we don't actually need to change the laws at all because they already stopped that person from having a gun. Exactly. Not to mention that the way that the FBI tracks mass shootings is so unbelievably unhelpful when it comes to public policy oh, solutions 100%. to preventing them. Because they lump in like school shootings and these random mass attacks that everyone envisions when they think of a mass shooting with gang violence. Yeah. Um, so if you have like a gang shootout where I think believe it's three or four or more people get injured. Yeah, it that depends which database. Right. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's yeah, three, yeah. sometimes it's four. Four or more people get injured. That goes into the FBI statistics as a mass shooting. Yeah. And so when you hear people on CNN and MSNBC saying, oh, well, there have already been 100 mass shootings so far this year. You look at the breakdown and it's like, oh, well, 80 of those occurred in Chicago and were instances right. of gang violence. And oh, yeah, Chicago is one of the cities that has the tightest restrictions on handguns. And most of these were committed by people who were not legally having access to it, the firearm. It's the same as the school shooting statistics, actually, because right, oh, you'll hear that headline yep. that there's so many school, there's been so many school shootings even this year, and how are we not preventing these tragedies? And when you hear school shooting, you think, um, you think Columbine, you think, you know, those Parkland, kinds of, you think Parkland. Right. Um, and that, like a Parkland style event is not happening every day. They're extremely rare. What they're counting is, if it's on school property after a football game and the teens were drinking and they have weapons, which is bad. You know, I'm not saying like, oh, this is fine. It's just nothing should be done about it. But an argument breaks out. Somebody shoot. It could be a totally, it could be non-fatal. It could be somebody brandishing and shooting Accidental a gun. Accidental discard discharges. That yeah. counts as a school shooting, which again, bad. We could ha talk for strategies to combat that kind of thing that is so fundamentally different than saying that a uh, Parkland or a Columbine type thing happens um, every day. And, you know, by the way, Parkland, you know, involved a, a mass killer who was known to law enforcement, who was known to the FBI, whose family had reported him who said, he is dangerous, he has threatened us with weapons, who was known to the sheriff, who was known to the school officials. Everybody, you know, we hear, see something, say something. Everyone saw and said something. The existing legal structure, at least on paper, had every ability to do something about this, and they didn't because the actual bureaucrats involved were negligent. So, right. you know, when people say, you know, they go on TV and say, oh, we need more regulation of this, more regulation of that. No, you need people to actually be responsible in the extreme minority of cases where there is danger and there is harm. Right, follow up on tips. And then in other cases, the NCIS background system is not updated on a regular basis. So people who should be prohibited from purchasing handguns, if they go there before their their conviction ends up in the background check database, they're still able to buy a gun uh, because no. people, because uh, bureaucrats and people who work for the government are often lazy and bad at their jobs and yeah. they they don't update it properly. Um, great point about the school shootings. I mean, the Washington Post has a tracker of school shootings. Same thing. You go through, you're like, oh, somebody um, unfortunately died by suicide in the parking lot yeah. of a high yeah, school. Terrible. Absolutely yeah, bad. Yeah. Not saying it's not, not bad, a, but they're not counted a school as a shooting. Yeah. yeah. Um, they include colleges in that as well. So if there's like a domestic dispute in uh, off-campus housing, that counts as a school shooting. I mean, it's just outrageous. Mm -hmm. More free media right after this.